Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at Trading180.com and welcome to this week's Supply and Demand, Forex and Gold, Fundamental and Technical Analysis for the week ahead starting April the 22nd. Hope you all had a great trading week and don't forget to like, subscribe and share uh, this video with other traders if you find the content I provide useful every uh, every week. So uh, getting into uh, the upcoming data and in the United States, all eyes will be on the first quarter GDP growth rate and PCE prices alongside personal income and spending figures. Additionally, investors will closely monitor durable goods orders, S&P global manufacturing and services, PMIs and pending and new home sales. Meanwhile, manufacturing and services PMIs will be released for Australia, Japan, the euro area and the United Kingdom. Also, consumer confidence data will be scrutinized for the euro area, Germany and the United Kingdom. Finally, investors will closely watch interest rate decisions in Japan and China and Australia's inflation rates. So a lot going on, a lot of market moving news uh, this week, potentially, especially in the US, where you have, you know, the first quarter GDP growth rate and also PCE prices, which is basically uh, the Federal Reserve's preferred measure of inflation. So um, getting into now the week's trades and this week was um, a bit of a loser. So we had the Australian dollar Swiss franc. Um, which was a break-even trade, and we had the Swiss uh, yen, which ended up uh, losing. It was going in our direction, and then um, the risk-off sentiment kicked in. The uh, the retaliation, not necessarily by Israel, wasn't confirmed, or I don't think it's been confirmed yet, but uh, the attack in Iran um, and the explosion um, caused risk-off sentiment, which kind of put an end to the uh, Swiss yen short trade. But did take some profit off on the euro dollar, but let's get in. I'll get into those uh, those trades in a little bit. But starting off on the um, Aussie Swiss. So basically, the reason why I wanted to be a buyer of the Aussie Swiss um, was because the Australian dollar are one of the last central banks to cut rates, and the Swiss franc are already started their cutting cycle. So um, ultimately, you do want to be a buyer, or I want to be a buyer anyway, of the Aussie Swiss. So on. Um, it was the Wednesday, I think it was Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, yeah, it was the Wednesday. We ended up, um, well, I ended up buying um, the uh, the Aussie Swiss down into this daily demand zone. I'm on a four hour time frame chart. Um, ended up buying with my stop loss around the 58.23s. And um, I break my trades up into three. And so what I do is I enter at a market order and then a 50% pullback and then like a 95% pullback. Now, if prices pull back, then I can basically get a better, you know, risk reward type of trade. Now, um, we had, or, you know, what happened was, is that, you know, got in on the, uh, on the entry, which was, which was around here, then ended up, the price ended up pulling back 50%. And so I ended up getting triggered into the 50%. Now, once prices come into that 50% area and trigger me in, my main objective is to try to get the tr to the trade to a break even, right? And so a break even would be a, uh, at least a one to one on this position here. And that's what happened uh, on the Thursday prices when, you know, came down, came up into the one to one. So then that left me with just one position to uh, to swing trade and hopefully swing trade. Right. So that's the one I'm looking at. And, you know, it makes it easier to hold trades knowing that you can't lose from, you know, a break even position. Right. So um, that is the uh, the strategy. So um, once that came in and then I cancel as well, the, uh, the, the final pending order, once I've made a one-to-one. -one. And so I take the risk out of the trade, uh, out of the trade idea. So now I was only in one position. So I've made one, a one-to-one, -one, and then I'm swing trading this position here. And then, um, unfortunately over the weekend, actually it wasn't even over the weekend. Sorry. It was the, uh, it was the, uh, Thursday. It was the Friday morning. Uh, pretty much woke up to uh, to this basically where my stop loss on that trade was triggered. So that ended up being, you know, just a break even trade. Nothing you can do about that. There's nothing that, you know, no price action in the world is going to predict, you know, what is going to happen in a region, you know, in the world. So um, 
it could have happened. It could not have happened. Prices could have went in my direction. Could not have. We just move on to the next one. And uh, that was that. So that ended up being a break-even trade. And the uh, the Swiss yen, um, again, was uh, entering into this trade. And this really was the entry here. So this candlestick here. Um, it was really taking advantage of a, uh, a lower time frame uh, stop hunt. So if you go down to like the 15-minute, um, the, the, the stop hunt really was this, was right here. That's where the stop hunt occurred above this previous high here. And so my entry was was here and prices were obviously going in the direction. And then uh, what ended up happening was, again, uh, risk off sentiment. Now, both currencies, the Swiss franc and the yen are risk off currencies, but the market just decided that the Swiss franc uh, was the dominant risk off currency. So um, prices could have easily have gone in my direction, but the market chose to put their money into the Swiss franc rather than the yen. And so I ended up actually losing um, all three trades, all three positions on this, which, um, you know, it's only 0.1% on each, so 0.3% in total on that. So that's not um, any any major loss or anything like that. So that was it. But I am getting back into this trade. Um, the guys in the group, uh, in, the, in the private mentoring group, know exactly why. Reason being is because the Swiss franc is still in the cutting cycle, of course. And so um, I think tensions have kind of calmed down as well um, in the region. And so if that does continue, then hopefully prices should want to roll over. So I do uh, want to get involved in, in and around this area here on the uh the Swiss yen. Now it wasn't all bad this week because uh there was a nice profitable trade. Now I'm out of this trade totally. So um the euro dollar took the final profits off uh, around these lows here uh early in the week. And so um so yeah that ended up being a decent trade overall. I took off the majority of profits at around here it was about um took off about 75% profits at a uh, two to one here and then I uh, was uh, holding it all the way down to this area uh, around here took profits and uh, the rest of the 25% off of that so that worked out to be <coughs> decent as well so yeah an average week I guess nothing major happened but um, in terms of uh, the account balance but um, from a trading perspective um, it was uh, um, the new trades that I took this week unfortunately one loser and one break-even trade, and I am also in um, uh, another uh, trade uh, or two on the Aussie CAD, which I might get into, probably will get into next week. So uh, that was the analysis for this week. And um, yeah, so getting really into the uh, the charts, starting off on the dollar index or equally weighted dollar index and if you're new to the channel on the top right hand side I'll put a link to uh, the video um, that I've made previously uh, which explains why I use an equally weighted dollar index and um, and how to calculate it on and input it on the uh, on your charts on trading view charts as well as the other equally weighted indexes like the euro the pound and the yen and so looking at the dollar uh, index overall and looking at overall dollar strength against obviously the, uh, the other currencies to trade against really I want to be a buyer of the dollar but I'm looking for more of a pullback so I'm back into that area here and then I'm looking for um, a, a buy trade on the dollar cross uh, one of the dollar pairs or I'm looking at prices making higher highs and then a pullback into a higher low which would be a demand zone before looking at going uh, long. So really those are the options, right? In terms of technicals. And um, again, I'm only looking for this as uh, more confluence. So if prices pull down into this demand zone, then I'm going to something like maybe the dollar Swiss or the Euro dollar to look for uh, a buy trade on the, uh, on the um, dollar Swiss or a sell trade on the euro dollar but um fundamentally of course we understand from a risk sentiment perspective the uh the, the israel strikes you know targets in iran u.s officials say as middle east tensions rise and um that was obviously uh, uh nearly 24 hours ago and um 
things so far seem to be, uh, you know, still obviously tensions are high and no one knows what's going to go on. But ultimately, uh, we are in a risk off environment and the risk off environment does help the um, the US dollar overall It is seen as a risk off currency, safe haven currency. And so uh, the dollar should benefit from overall um risk off sentiment uh, also as well from a fundamental perspective a monetary policy perspective um uh, this was uh, posted by myself in the uh, in the discord uh, group in terms of the united states uh, fundamental news channel and the uh, it says here interest rate futures tracking expectations for federal reserve policy moves fell on tuesday after federal reserve chair jerome powell said recent data on inflation have not given policymakers the greater confidence needed for them to pivot to interest rate cuts soon so basically that's a hawkish statement meaning that they're not looking to cut interest rates anytime soon and that has really been reflected in the uh, fed watch tool if you're looking at you know from june uh you know probability of a cut it looks like or no change it looks like 83 percent chance of a no change and that uh you know contrast to uh what we were looking at a month ago when it was a 25 percent chance of a uh, hold Right. And then as we've seen now, uh, you know, we've seen the, the chances of a hold increase. Therefore, that's why you're seeing, you know, if we're looking at this from a month ago, let's say it was from, you know, March the uh, the 19th, right? 19th, 20th, you're seeing this. So price, so hikes, or I should say cuts have been uh, priced out of the market. That's appreciative of a currency. And that's the reason why you've seen this happen. It's not because there's... Um, any kind of indicator or price action telling you that prices are going higher, the market is pricing in the value of the dollar based on what the central bank uh, monetary policy and what that is. And that's the reason why prices do what they do over the medium to long term. In the short term, it's really about um, it's really about liquidity uh, and positioning um, things like that. But ultimately, you know, the uh, the fundamentals play out over the medium to long term as well as risk sentiment. So that's where we are with the with the dollar. Now, uh, looking at the uh, the dollar yen and dollar yen this week has again the, the yen really hasn't acted as a safe haven player. The market has chosen really not to use it uh, as a safe haven currency. It did sell off a little bit, but as things you know came back to a bit of normality. Uh, the market has decided to buy dollars, and that's really based off of the um, the carry trade um, idea that you want to buy a currency with a higher interest rate and sell the currency with the lower interest rate. And even though the yen is looking to high rates, um, it doesn't. It's not making much of a difference for now. But we're up into intervention zones where the Bank of Japan do not want prices to continue to devalue. Who knows where that level is? It was told it was said it was going to be at 152, might have been the start of it. We're at 154s, heading to 155s, close to 155s at the moment. So if prices do continue to move higher, um, then we're likely to get uh, some sort of uh, intervention. Now, um, from a oh, gone to the wrong one. Where am I now? Not Eurozone. And oh, no. I have messed this up. No, here it is. The um, Japan uh, fundamentals, I guess, the news. And it says here that Japan consumer inflation eased more than expected while staying above the Bank of Japan's target as board members get ready to revise their price forecasts this week. So we did see on the chart, um, you know, there was this data that came out and it did, you know, the, the forecast came in um, lower than the previous or the actual came in lower than the previous. But um, what is expected, you know, is even with the slowdown, the pace of inflation has now stayed at or above the Bank of Japan's 2% target every month for two full years, offering support for the central bank to continue normalizing policy if that trend continues. So obviously uh, looking to potentially high rates. The Bank of Japan is widely expected to hold policy 
uh, at its April meeting following its first rate hike in 17 years in March. Economists and investors will keep a close eye on the bank's forecast for inflation going forward as they try to gauge whether the Bank of Japan will move again. So if the Bank of Japan start to uh, forecast inflation to go higher, then it pretty much is signaling that they are likely to hike as well alongside that forecast. And so, um, yeah, let's see what happens here. But if you're looking to be a buyer of the yen, you're really kind of, um, you know, looking to just, I guess, sell anywhere around now um, and hope that you catch some sort of intervention. Um, and if you're looking to continue to buy, then you're looking at the first areas are going to be either there or really down into the 151 area if you're continuing to buy. Moving on to the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD this week, uh, making higher highs, of course, and then we've had a bit of a pullback, but really the nearest pullback in terms of demand is going to be all the way down into the 135. So unfortunately, nothing uh, from a daily demand zone perspective unless we get higher highs being made and then a pullback into a demand zone, a newly created demand zone. But right now, there's nothing really until we come down to um, this area here. Like I said, from a daily demand zone perspective, there are some intraday trades on here, um, potentials one setting up, but uh, I'm not going to go into that in this video. That's for the members. So um, that's where we are on the dollar CAD. The path of these resistance really should be to the upside. The Bank of Canada look like they're cutting, still look like they're cutting first, um, and the Fed are looking to cut last. So based on just interest rate um, divergences and leading and lagging, I guess, um, the dollar should still continue to be a buy. Uh, pound dollar, the pound dollar this week, the, the, the dollar's acted more as the safe haven. So you can see what's really happened, uh, you know, on the uh, Friday and um, yeah, we've just seen pretty much prices uh, move to the downside uh, as the dollar has acted more as a safe haven. Now, um, we have got this supply zone here as well. If prices do pull back into that supply zone, then that actually could be a decent area to look for. Some short trades. Um, from a fundamental perspective, you do have some dovish comments from the Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey and um, the pound sterling failed to capitalise on the above consensus midweek inflation figures thanks to comments made by Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey who signalled uh, he is intent on cutting interest rates soon. So there was actually some decent um, uh, uh, inflation, I think it's wage inflation figures that came out. But um, even though it was uh, considered as being, um, you know, positive or should support the pound, uh, Andrew Bailey has pretty much poured some cold water on that and um, has come out as being a bit dovish. So that could be really what is affecting the pound for now, um, as well as obviously risk off sentiment from a risk off you know, perspective, you would expect really the, uh, the the dollar to continue to um to strengthen, which may drive prices to the downside. So I think the path of these resistance should be uh, to the downside, both from not only a risk off sentiment perspective, but also as well the fact that the uh, Federal Reserve are hawkish and the uh, Bank of England uh, seem a bit more dovish, and rate cuts are expected sooner uh, in the UK. Pound yen, uh, pound yen. Again, uh, dovish uh, Bank of England, and um, really the the the, uh, the yen really should be uh, the you know the buy. So really a short trade. So I think any pullbacks up into this zone here um, should be a decent buy. I think into around here. So anywhere from this the underside of this supply zone, but a fresher area of supply is always uh, better and better value. So I think if you're looking for any kind of trades on the uh, on the pound yen uh, in terms of short trades that should be decent if you're looking for a buy trade this level has been touched several times once twice here so really you're looking for a fresher area of sub, uh, of demand um to look for uh, any kind of buy trades uh euro dollar and again we've looked at this in terms of uh, the trade that i took uh 
uh, last week and profit taking, but from a, a daily supply zone, demand zones. Um, really, we're, again, we're in uh, an area where you haven't really got any supply or demand. So um, again, I think if you are looking for any kind of supply, either waiting for prices to pull all the way back up to there, or you're looking for a new low to be made and then a pullback into a lower high, which would then, uh, you know, be the, uh, uh, that would be a supply zone right here. Right. Um, but that's really what you're looking for. Again, there are some intraday trades that you could look towards in terms of a potential stop hunt around the, uh, the highs, but, um, from a daily supply and demand zone, there's really no trades, um setting up for now um in the euro news channel uh we have um you know institutional analysts are revising lower their forecast for the euro against the dollar following a recent reappraisal of where interest rates in the us and eurozone are headed in the coming months and so with the federal reserve unlikely to cut rates as much as the european central bank in 2024 Team at Credit Agricole reckon a fall to parity in the euro to dollar exchange rate is now possible on their forecast horizon. That makes all the sense in the world. You know, you've got one central bank hiking um, or holding rates and one central bank looking to cut rates soon. So the path of these resistance should still continue to be to the downside. So you can, if you want to trade in alignment with fundamentals, just eliminate any long trades, right? Just don't trade in the, in the long trade direction, regardless of what prices do in the short term path of these resistance should continue to be to the downside so let's see what happens with the euro dollar euro yen um euro yen sold off you can see this long wick here um and then um with risk kind of retreating you know prices have obviously you know pulled way back up but that presents a nice opportunity for again any short trades if prices do come up to anywhere around now to these highs i think that's going to be a really nice uh short trade as the euro prepares for rate cuts and of course the data needs to support that narrative um you know no point in just buying the uh the euro if the data starts to come out and support in fact uh you know rate holds but um as long as the central bank is seen as cutting rates sooner then i think this should be a sell and especially if you know this week we do have the bank of interest rate decision and although they're expected to hold it's more about the forecast the inflation forecast so if they if the yen and the, uh, the bank of japan forecast inflation to be uh, to come in higher um which is likely then um this i think is going to be a really nice sell euro pound so the euro pound uh this week has or let's say on friday has really shot through these uh, these levels again that could be based really on a uh, dovish um bank of england but i think overall regardless of how dovish the bank of england is as long as the euro is seen as being the currency that is high uh, sorry cutting first then in fact this presents a really nice shorting opportunity so i do think if prices come up to here or come up to uh, anywhere around these uh, 8630s 8640s i think those are going to be really nice uh, short trades i'd rather buy the pound over the euro at the moment um so that's where we are but if you are looking for long trades on the uh, on the euro pound then you're looking at that zone that demand zone there that would be the first area to look for um a uh, a buy trading you've got some hidden demand right there so any pullbacks into this zone here to look for a buy trade if you're buying looking to buy the euro aussie dollar so aussie dollar again in a risk off environment you know pretty much the um the, the dollar the us dollar is going to be uh going to appreciate uh we have come down now in fact to this uh longer term demand zone around here from november 2023 we've touched it bounced off of it not a pair i'm interested in trading at the moment until the fed look like they're looking to cut rates but um and in a risk off environment the, the dollar should be the one to strengthen so if you are looking for trades to the short side the nearest supply zone is going to be right here and then you're looking at taking a trade within this zone also as well you do have uh, some supportive um confluence in terms of support and resistance so you've got you've got uh um 
uh, support there, support there, and a bit of resistance here. So nice. Can look for that as a uh, as a as a target if you want to uh, look to take this uh, this trade. So um, and then we've got gold, right? Gold uh, not slowing down, of course. Lots of confluence with gold. Um, you know, obviously Middle East tensions risk off. Um, and from a, a fundamental perspective, um, we do see um, gold or the analysts do see gold obviously continuing to, you know, increase and uh, lots of uh, charts and stats on here. So investors turn bullish on gold. So you've got the gross longs um, versus gross shorts, right? So gross shorts, not too many, loads of gross longs. And you've got uh, central banks keep buying gold. So in the in Q4 of 2023, you can see pretty much, you know, although it came down from 2023 in the third quarter, um, we're still, you know, um, they're still buying gold. So lots of stats pretty much supporting um, higher gold prices, as well as just the fact that um, we're in a risk off environment and also as well the expectation of the Fed to uh, to cut rates eventually, so um, I think the path of least resistance should really be to to the uh, to the upside. Continue, uh, it just depends on where you want to be a buyer, uh, where value is. It looks like probably that area there would be at least decent value, the first decent value area on gold before looking at going long. So twenty three twenties, twenty three nineteen. Um, would be decent and of course the lower it goes the cheaper it is because remember price and value are not the same thing so because price is coming down you know this is looks like it could be more and more undervalued if fundamentally um, gold is uh, you know continuing to still uh, present um, uh, buying opportunities in terms of uh, you know risk off sentiment and um, the Federal Reserve cutting rates so Let's see what happens with uh, gold going forward. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the analysis. Don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, and as well, share the video on all your social medias to support the channel. Feel free to support us. To, uh, let me get it out to support the channel, and um, it would be much appreciated. Take care, and uh, speak to you soon.